What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how you can set up your own Ark Survival Ascended dedicated server. Just before we get started, there was a ton of controversy regarding dedicated servers in Ark Survival Ascended, but literally within half an hour ago, there was an update and now you can download and host your own dedicated servers with no extra strings attached. Previously, you had to use a specific hosting company and only one of them or pay for the game another time using a second Steam account. That is no longer required. So now you can truly host your own Ark Survival Ascended dedicated server completely for free. And this video is going to show you exactly what you need to do in order to get that done. Cool. First of all, downloading and running the server. It's going to take around 16 gigabytes of RAM and a really good computer in order to run the server properly, especially if you have a lot of players expected to join it. Most likely you'll need a second computer or a powerful laptop to run the server and the server's only going to be running as long as your system that's hosting the server is turned on and connected to the internet. With that being said, assuming you're on a computer that has the power to run both the server and the game or just the server, this video is for you. Let's start. First of all, downloading Ark Survival Ascended dedicated server. There's a few options for this. Number one, if you have Steam installed, open it. Then find Ark Survival Ascended dedicated server and install it. This will require you to have Ark Survival Ascended on your account, but you can download it without needing to buy the game using Steam's official software, Steam CMD. This is used for downloading and hosting dedicated servers. Let's do that now. In the description, down below, you'll find a link to the Steam CMD website, as well as a direct download link. If you click the link that takes you to the article, click Windows over here. Then, number one, this will download the latest Steam CMD onto your computer. Then simply open the zip and extract Steam CMD to a folder where you'll be hosting the server pretty much permanently. For me, I'll be hosting it on my desktop. So I'll right click, new folder, and call it ASA, yes, Arc Survival Ascended dedicated server. I'll drag Steam CMD into here then close the zip, possibly delete it and open the folder. Then inside of the folder, I'll make a new folder called Steam CMD, hit enter and move Steam CMD.exe into this folder. Why do we do this? Well, simply organization. Steam files will be in Steam CMD here. If we run Steam CMD.exe, it'll download a copy of Steam into the folder here. Then in a separate folder going back, then we'll make a new folder called simply server. This is where our game files will be stored. We'll head back into Steam CMD and at the very top over here, click, type in CMD and hit enter. This will open a command prompt window in the folder we're currently in. Perfect. Now, all we need to do is look in the description down below and copy the command exactly as follows. Steam CMD force install dir dot dot slash server or whatever you call this folder over here. If it has spaces, include quotation marks from the start here all the way to the very end. If the folder name includes spaces, or you'd like it to be a different place, for example, see program files, or whatever, surround it with quotation marks, this little thing here. Then log in anonymous, app update, followed by the dedicated server ID, validate and quit. Perfect. Simply hit enter, then Steam CMD will log in and start downloading the now free Arc dedicated server without using a Steam account. So you don't need to own the game in order to download the server. So you don't need a second account with the game in order to download it. You can just download it for free. You'll need to wait for this to finish. The download is around nine or so gigabytes. Um, and just a quick note, make sure you have this command copied if you modified it at all as we'll be using it in just a moment. Then it'll verify the server files and shortly after we're done. Now we've successfully installed our dedicated server. Once again, if you change that path, you may want to minimize instead of closing this window, but for me, I'll close it. Then inside of the server folder here, you can now see all of the server files inside of shooter game binaries. Win64, you should find arc ascended server.exe. Perfect. We'll copy the path at the very top by clicking here and right click copy. We'll be using this. Let's create a file that both updates our server to the latest version and starts it. In this folder here, we'll right click new and text document. Then we'll call it start.bat and remove.txt afterwards. Hit enter and confirm. If it didn't change the file type at the very top, click view followed by show and make sure file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, you'll find in the ribbon bar at the very top, a view tab and both of these tick boxes on the far right. Then change the name to start.bat. Now you can right click and edit this or open it with any text editor such as notepad. Now inside of him, we'll paste that launch command that we used previously, steam cmd blah blah blah, but at the very start, make sure you include the folder name. So 
Steam CMD as such, we'll copy it and paste it at the very start, slash, there we go. Now, when we run this file, it'll update the server. The next line here, we just make this a bit bigger. The next line here will be to start our server. In the description down below, you'll find another long string of text, or I'll have it linked across to an article where you can copy everything. That sounds a bit better. This is the line you'll find that follows. The island is the map, listen, session name, followed by server name here. We'll highlight this text here and replace it with our server name. Example, troubleshoot. I don't think you need to include quotation marks around this name here, but you may if it includes spaces. Then server password. If you want a password for people to join your server, you can set one here. Otherwise, remove this entire section from the first question mark all the way to the very end here. So it reads your server name, question mark, and instead of server password, it goes server name, question mark, server admin password. Here you'll find admin password, highlight this, and set a very strong password that nobody can guess. Definitely do not copy me, but SDF 1234, good enough. Then port 47s and query port 27015. This is the default for the Arc Survival Evolved server, as far as I remember. I may change this in the description down below, but anyways, these ports are fine. Max players, followed by how many players you want in your server, and finally, no battle eye. I think you need no battle eye, but you may not. Once again, if I find out info, I'll include it down below. Now we can save the file, and if I were to run it, it would update the server, then run the game server. Let's just add some more info and space it out nicely. So echo updating server and then down here echo starting server. Maybe just a few lines so we can see this easily. There we go. Perfect. At echo off. There we go. Now we can save this file and use it. Now we can head back to the base folder and run start.bat. Nope, seems like I missed something. Oh, needs to be backslashes. Whoops. Okay, replacing those with backslashes. Now we should be able to save and run it. Cool. Now it's updating our server so it'll verify the game files. This will take a short while depending on the drive that you have this on. It's definitely worthwhile verifying files as it makes sure everything is up to date. Then it should start, but I got an error there. Let's quickly make sure this command is right. Miss something. Ah, start. There we go. I'll save it and we should be able to run it. Sweet. There we go. Our server is now running. So when we run the script, our server will update and then start. Now you can go ahead and join the game yourself locally if you're running it on the same computer that you're playing the game on. I'll push this across to the side and just in idle after it starts for the first time, it's using around 15 gigabytes of RAM and slowly climbing, it'll probably equalize somewhere around 16 gigs or so. You do need quite a bit of RAM in order to run the server, especially if you're going to be playing on the same computer you're hosting the server on. Right, Steam, Arc Survival Ascended, and play. You can see that I'm already in game. I'm technically in game in the dedicated server, which is running over here. If you were to install this on a PC that doesn't have Steam installed, it won't say anyone's playing it as it's logged in anonymously. All right, so the game's beginning. We can start, join game, and on the unofficial servers here, sorted by ping, you're not able to find your server here unless everything's port forwarded and set up already. Instead, you can head back to the main menu, and it till this open up console in the very bottom of the screen here. Now we can type in open space followed by our server's IP. So in our case, as it's the same computer, 127.0.0.1 colon 7777. Hit enter. And if I tab out, you can see the console here. We've received an incoming request from my account and we should be loading into the server, create, spawn, the UM. We're now connected to our server and we're playing on it. If I were to close the server, we'd lose connection as you'd expect. But obviously I don't want to do that. So that's really it. I'll close out of the game and let's talk about getting other people to join as that's definitely an important part of running your own server. We can also close the server as we're not going to be doing anything with it for the time being. Let's keep in mind the ports that we mentioned in our start.bat file. We mentioned 7777 and 27015. There's three ports we need to port forward, which are 47s, then 48s, and 27015. These three seem to be the ones that you need to port forward. I'm not too sure about the 48s, but looking at other people hosting their servers, this seems to be a recurring port that pops up, and there's very little harm in port forwarding this anyways. It may not be required though, so you can skip over it if you need. Anyways, I've taken two steps forward. Let's start with getting other people to connect on your local network, as that's the first step towards getting friends over the internet to join. First of all, you'll need to allow these ports through your firewall. If you're using a third-party 
antivirus or firewall software, you'll need to figure out how to do it there. But if you're using the default Windows firewall in the description down below, you'll find these four commands. Simply copy them, then hit start, type in PowerShell and run this as admin. Right click, run as admin. If you're on Windows 11, you can use terminal, click on as admin. Just make sure that it says Windows PowerShell. Otherwise, click the drop down and choose Windows PowerShell. Then paste in these commands, hit enter and hit enter a few times just to make sure everything runs. One, two, three, four. Four commands were ran and these ports are now allowed through our Windows firewall. If I hit start and type in firewall, then head to Windows Defender with advanced blah, blah, blah. Open this up, head to inbound. You should see in here, Arc Survival Ascended Server, ASA Server. Sweet. Let's close this and see how other people on our network would join us. Obviously, they'll use the open command as we did, but what IP address do they use? Well, hit start, type in CMD or terminal, and we'll run the command IP config. Hit enter, and it'll tell you all the ways that you're connected to the internet or networks. Scroll up to find how you're connected to the internet, in my case, Ethernet. Then look for IPv4 address. This number here is your local IP address. Copy this, as we'll be using it just now. Other computers connected to the same router as you or Wi-Fi network should be able to join just by typing in open space that number colon 7777 in the in-game console. Now you have a server that runs for not only yourself, but other people on your local network. How do friends over the internet join you? Well, that's where things get a little bit confusing if you've never hosted a server before. Port forwarding. Don't let that scare you. It's really simple. As long as you know your router's password, then you can most likely port forward without a hassle. If you find that you go through the entire port forwarding process and nothing works, you may need to call your ISP as port forwarding may be disabled until you set up a static IP. Anyways, where do we begin? Well, first of all, log into your router. To find this, look for how you're connected to the internet and the default gateway should be the address that you head to in your browser to open up your router settings. Obviously, as everyone's router is different from model to model, I've created a very generic router example website where I'll show you exactly what you'll be doing. Essentially, you'll find the port forwarding tab or something along these lines somewhere in your menus. Then you'll see something like external and internal ports, or just a port number, protocol, IP, and whether it's enabled or not, something along these lines. Essentially, you'll be filling in 7777 for both internal and external over here. If you find that you need to input a range such as this, you'll need to paste the number on both sides. Then protocol should be UDP and your local IP should match the one that we found in our console just now. In my case, I only need to enter the last few characters, so I'll enter 50. Then I'll click add or save or whatever you need to click. Then we'll do the same for 8888. So internal and external UDP 50 add. Finally, 27015. We'll do it again, paste it in all of these. This time I'll leave it as TCP 50 and add new. Perfect. Now we should be port forwarded. All you need to do now is Google what is my IP and that number that's returned to you either through Google or one of the websites that you click on should be your external IP and the number people can use to connect to your server over the internet. So they'll open up their in-game console. Once again, it's type in open space your external IP address colon followed by 7777. Enter and you'll join your friend's server or your own server just like that. Perfect. Just a quick note, I've only showed you port forwarding with one router. Let's say it's my computer to the router to the internet. That's simple. If you're using multiple routers in your network, as in your computer to one router to another, then to the internet, you'll need to port forward each hop along the way. So on the furthest router to the next router along the chain, all the way on each device until it reaches your computer. Multi-router port forwarding can be a bit confusing. So in the description down below, you'll find a link to a guide that should hopefully help you with that. At this point, there's nothing left but to play R. You've now set up your Arc Survival Ascended dedicated server completely for free. And as long as you're running your server with start.bat, then your friends should be able to join and play with you. If I missed anything, please do let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of this, as I'm pretty happy that they now allow you to host your own dedicated servers without having to buy a second copy of the game. Anyways, I'm glad the drama's mostly over. Now we can just enjoy the game. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot. Hopefully you found this video useful, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.